Traffic Township of Houghton in Norfolk County. This is to amend our zoning bylaw 1Z 2014. The file number is there. Recommended for approval for reasons set out in report number DCS 1781 and that no public input has been received for this application therefore will not be considered as part of this decision and Alicia the four-year period is understood here with the application correct discussion those in favor carried thank you Alicia thank you for all the work you've done this evening all three applications thank you I am now on page 125. <clears throat> this is staff report DCS 17-84. An application has been received to rezone the subject lands from agriculture to Hamlet Residentia, Residential. Sorry. Laura Vanderlee has put forth the application and that affects the lands described as 414 Concession 2, Townsend, Scotland. I now open this public meeting on staff report DCS 17-84. Welcome Matt and if you're ready would you please give us this report. Thank you. Thank you. Planning staff have received an application uh, to rezone the subject lands which are uh, currently zoned agriculture to Hamlet Residential. The underlying uh, official plan designation is, uh, is Hamlet. Um, so the policy um, is in place for this zone change to occur. Staff have reviewed all of relevant policy in regards to the uh, provincial policy statement and in our official plan and recommend approval of this application. We have received um, one letter of public input. Uh, that public, uh, that letter should be before you. Um, there were some concerns with the subject lands um, being taken out of agricultural production. However, the lands are designated as Hamlet. Um, so the intended use um, for, for these lands uh, has been residential for some time. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And uh, that letter uh, from Je De Jeff Detmar is on page 135 in your package. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> Is Laura in attendance this evening? There you are. Good, thank you. Is there anyone in attendance that wishes to speak in support of the application? And as always, we ask the applicant if they wish to speak first. Do you wish to speak or are you just going to sort of hang back in the corner there for now? You're going to hang back in the corner for now. That's fine. Is there anyone in attendance this evening that wishes to speak in support of the apl application? Is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition or in general to the application? Any further input from council members? I'm looking for a motion to close this public meeting. Oliver has moved. Columbus has seconded that we close the public meeting. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. The recommendation on page 125 what's your wishes gentlemen councillor Sonnenberg I will move that recommendation and that is for approval councillor Brunton you're seconding that Sonnenberg has moved Brunton has seconded that the application of Laura Vanderlee at 1833 Charlottesville Road 5 this affects the lands described as part of lot 6 concession 2 in the geographic township of Townsend Norfolk County is to amend our zoning bylaw 1Z 2014. File number is there, recommended for approval for reasons as set out in this report, 17-84. And that public input was received for this application and, and therefore was considered as part of this recommendation. Discussion on the motion for approval. If not, those in favor. That's carried, thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Pam, planning staff, thank you kindly. That concludes our uh, public meeting and applications this evening. I now want to go back to the agenda and pick up where we left off. It'll just be just after four o'clock. I am going to page 85. This is the Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Board minutes from October. 23rd, 2017. 
It's been moved by Councillor Oliver and seconded by Councillor Brunton that the minutes of the Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Board meeting of October the 23rd, 2017 be received as information. And this is on page 85. Councillor Brunton, please. Thank you, Mayor Luke. My, my question is on page 86. And, uh, yes. Um, I noticed a couple things here on the grants, and I, I don't know if it's time to deal with them or not, but I thought I'd just ask the question. I have them too, so fire away. Um, will I get the right one here? I've got to go down. Church out serving. $3,000, and then it comes up again, down again. Let me get it straight here. Sorry. Third one from the top, 3000 and then there's 3000 again for this church out-serving. Is it the same group or the first one says the gathering food center and then it says church out serving can you explain the, the difference there or what certainly um uh, through the mayor council brunton this uh these recommendations are just that they're from the grant review committee uh subcommittee of tdap and they form part of an official council or a staff report that will be coming before you december 5th um, so you'll have an opportunity to, you know, we can get right into those details, but to answer your question right now, this organization made two applications through the grant program. One is for the, um, the I Believe in Simcoe Day, which is a non-denominational event that's put on uh, right out front. Okay. And, and the other one, the third one down, relates to their new, I think it's called Riverside 83. 83 it's the former Riverside. LCBO okay. building. Uh, to do some outreach uh, programs there. So again, council will have the full opportunity to uh, ask questions on December 5th when we bring that forward. Okay, my last one on that, if I may, is what is the South Coast Cultural Society? Never heard of it. Uh, through the mayor, that is the uh, not-for-profit wing of the South Coast Jazz Organization. Is that the one from Dover? It's the, it is uh, delivered in Dover, you're correct. All right, I guess we'll deal with that one and get the grants. Of okay. course, yeah. Thank you. Councillor Wells. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I have two quick uh, questions on page 87 and a motion on 4.1 that the Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Board accept the responsibility for acting as a planning advisory committee. I'm very pleased uh, that this has taken place at this committee, and I'm sure that we should send this to the province and make them very happy that, uh, you know, we are following their mandated programs. And the only other one I wanted to make a comment on, Mr. Mayor, is down at the very end of the page, Steve Irwin has informed the committee that he will no longer be uh, serving after uh, his term is up, and I just wanted to say that's a great loss to that committee. I can't say enough good about the input that he has given to that committee as well as to Norfolk County. He will be missed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Columbus. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple of questions. One is with the, uh, the Planning Advisory Committee. I'd like to ask Pam if uh, they have searched or researched other methods other than the Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Committee accepting this. Like, uh, my understanding is that Brant County does something different, and just wondered if you looked into how other municipalities are handling that. Uh, oh, through the, through the mayor, thank you, Mr. Columbus. Um, I, perhaps that might have been presented uh, when you were uh, on personal business. Um, there was a number, I believe there were five options the council uh, considered, and that was the preferred one, was the TDAB group would fulfill the, the uh, public advisory committee, the PAC, as required under the Planning Act. Okay. Thank you for that. The other one is these uh, grant review subcommittee recommendations. Were there any applications that were totally refused that we do not see in this document? Uh, through the mayor, I believe there were two or three that uh, were recommended uh, because they did not meet the eligibility requirements. Uh, there's a, probably a list of 12 or 13 different 
measures that have to be satisfied in order for uh, the committee to bring them forward as a recommendation to council. So they did not meet the criteria, therefore they're not in print here. Correct. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Columbus, Chris Baird, correct me, but I, I believe initially when we dealt with this planning advisory committee that the province has mandated, that staff had uh, approached a number of other municipalities, some near, some not so near, to saying what they were were doing. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly, but I do remember there was something that came forward. Question I have, uh, let's see, Columbus, no, the last speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Baird on page 86, just under the chart, the uh, TDAB is recommending that the county end the policy of grandparented funding, except for the high school bursaries, correct? I'm pleased to see that. In other words, other than the bursaries, a clean, clean uh, competition for everyone. I'm pleased to see that. Thank you, in my opinion. Anything uh, else? Uh, Councillor Oliver, then Sonnenberg. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for asking that question. I guess I had missed that one. This is a recommendation from the committee that we no longer, if you like, as grand grandfather those organizations that have traditionally got their small amounts each year. Uh, when we just accept these minutes as information, I presume that does not constitute an approval of that recommendation. And will that come to council at some point where we will have to decide whether or not to continue or to do away with those grandfathered recipients? Thank you. Uh, point. Th through the mayor, um, yes, Councillor uh, Oliver, you're absolutely correct. This is the first time that TDAP has included these recommendations in their minutes, and the minutes have got to you before the staff report. Um, so you will have that opportunity to uh, make that decision about the grand parenting and any other grant that's simply being recommended to you. Yeah, and yeah, I'm glad you raised that uh, because I think my comments probably gave you the impression that it's already in in stone, but the policy will have to be changed by council. But thank you for bringing that up. Councillor Sonnenberg. Mm. If I could refer to the uh, grant uh, table on page 86, these grants range in size from 500 to a high of 5,000. Now, one of the groups receiving 5,000 is the Tilson Bergen District Multi Service Center, an out of county facility. I'm just wondering, is uh, our usage proportionate to the grant we're giving them? I mean, tell me, tell me what this facility provides and uh, why are we so high? $5,000. Certainly, that's a great question uh, through the mayor. And again, we will get into these in more detail, but I, just to satisfy your question, uh, that, that group provides literacy services based out of Tilsonburg, and this represents the Norfolk County residents that proportion that participate in that literacy program. And they have historically received a grant um, at least for the last eight or nine years that I'm uh, aware of. It's a very effective program and uh, it does uh, result in you know, positive outcomes. Mr. Baird, before I call the question, <coughs> these uh, recommendations at the top of page 86, will be coming to our budget session in January, correct? Uh, th uh, through you, the, uh, in the mayor and council's budget, your annual operating budget, you have a dollar per capita, it's about $63,000. It's already in your base budget. And this report will be coming back to you December 5th for you to actually make those uh, okay. selections. And then anything left over would be available for your use for the remainder of 2018. Uh, so again, we can have more discussion okay. on that. So it'll actually come within a report December. Any other questions for staff? If not, it's been moved by Oliver and seconded <clears throat> by Brunton that the minutes of the Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Board of October 23rd, 2017 be received as information. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. That's it for reports of committees. Uh, 
Uh, no staff reports, discussion items that I'm aware of, reports of council members, anything to report from committees that you sit on that you should uh, make us aware. Bylaws are next. <coughs> Moved by Wells, seconded by Columbus, that bylaw 53Z 2017-2. Bylaw 76 said 2017 inclusive, and that bylaw 2017 117 to bylaw 2017 121 inclusive be passed, signed by the mayor clerk, fixed with the corporate seal. Discussion on those bylaws? Those in favor? The bylaws have been approved for this evening. Thank you. There are no uh, motions this evening. There are notice of motions. The first one under 16A is a, a notice of motion from Councillor Oliver and is concerning Hastings Drive, the OMB related direction. Notice of motion, speak. Um, Mr. Mayor, I think there's a motion there uh, requesting that you uh, allow council to vote on waiving the requirement. I'm looking to the clerk now. I know I saw it in his hand before the meeting. I think you'd have to consider that before we can actually consider the motion that I was hoping to uh, have debated tonight. Yes, I know this is a no all yeah. three are notices. Yeah, so if council doesn't pass that, then we don't debate this until the 28th of the motion. So this only pertains to this one, not to these. No. Thank you. I had not seen this. It's not on the schedule, of course. Uh, so I just want to explain to council that this is a, it's not in your package, this is a motion from Councillor Oliver. Well, I guess I'll read it and then uh, that'll make sense. Moved by Councillor Oliver and seconded by Councillor Brunton. That the rules of order be waived to allow a notice of motion respecting Hastings, Hastings Drive to be considered by Council as a motion this evening. So if this is passed and to waive our um, <clears throat> our rules of order procedure, then item 16A, which will then, if it's passed, would not be a notice of motion. It would be then dealt with as a motion. Got it. So I have read the motion that Councillor Oliver and Brunton have put on to waive the rules of order to allow the notice of motion to become a motion. Uh, speaking to the motion, go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor, for allowing us to consider this. And as council knows, I've been working for several weeks to try and get council to have the opportunity to, to uh, provide further direction as it deems appropriate to our solicitor as this OMB hearing date looms on the horizon. And Council will recall, I think it was two or three weeks ago, I first brought it up. And, and I'll also remind you that in October, it was a five Tuesday month. So we missed the last Tuesday of October as either a council and committee or a council meeting. And that's part of why, as the weeks clicked by, this became more and more important for us to be allowed to debate this tonight, hopefully, and, and uh, assuming a positive outcome, to then be able to meet with our solicitor next week next week, which is when it's been scheduled, as Mr. Baird and the county manager have, have reported to us. So that's why I'm asking council to support waiving the rules. You're, you've been aware of this motion for a couple of weeks now at least, and, and rather than having to simply have tonight as a notice and then not even be able to discuss the main motion until two weeks from now, which would be too late to be of any value to us when we try and meet with our solicitor. Uh, a week from this evening. So for that reason, I'm asking that council support waiving the rules. Should that motion to waive pass, 
then we would be at liberty to discuss the main motion, which is the one that should be of interest to us. That's all I have to say, Mr. Mayor. Thanks. Thank you. Other discussion? Okay. Uh, motion has been moved and seconded that the or rules of order be waived to allow a notice of motion respecting Hasten Drive to be considered a motion. No, this is a motion that's on the floor. We'll need two thirds for this. Can you explain to us why it's not a notice, notice of reconsideration? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the two-thirds uh, requirement in this instance is the general requirement in the procedural bylaw, the catch-all, that you can waive any rule within the procedural bylaw by a like two-thirds two -thirds majority. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we will need uh, um, we would need support from six of the nine. Those in favor of the motion. Those opposed. Motion is carried. Now, going to the motion 16A, which is before you, page 163. Same thing? Oh, okay. Um, when I looked through this motion, <clears throat> um, okay. my opinion is that as chair of council, I believe that we need a motion to reconsider this motion because this motion is contrary to the position voted upon and supported by this council back in May of this year. The motion that we just passed was a motion not for reconsideration but to suspend the rules, which I accept. That's the wish of this council. So I am going to say that I don't believe that this motion is in order. It needs to have a motion passed by this council to reconsider to, because it's contrary to what was approved by this council in May, in my opinion. This council can ask council to overrule my interpretation, and I respect that, but my interpretation is, is that this needs a two-thirds reconsideration to, because it's contrary to a decision made within the last year by this council, and that's our procedure. Councillor Oliver. Much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with the greatest of respect. Yes, the, absolutely. The reason why this has been handled this way and is presented this way and is worded this way is because that was the direction I received from the clerk, that if... If we did it as a notice of motion, if council chose to waive the rules of notice of motion, then this motion would be in order to be considered this evening. So I'm going to respect your, your ruling, Mr. Mayor, but I would suggest that's different than what I have been told directly by the clerk. And that was my conversation uh, with the clerk just now uh, because, again, I expressed that I had not seen that motion till just now to suspend the rules and to me this topic needs reconsideration which this council can approve but my opinion is it needs reconsideration it doesn't have it at this time do you wish to comment on this I just want to be clear uh, uh, obviously I, I wouldn't say um, there's a chair's ruling on the floor. The only thing I would say is that um, I, I believe uh, we fairly consistently said that reconsideration is required, but we take no stake in the chair's ruling whatsoever. It's up to council to decide how to proceed or, 
or do, do anything. We're just here to provide assistance. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, uh, that's, that is different than what I was told, but I'm going to respect your position. Uh, and, and obviously then we will have to, to, I gather, pass a further motion to reconsider and then assuming that passes by whatever it's required to pass. Two thirds. Only at that point would you then allow us to discuss if, if the that intent motion, of my is, is, motion is approved by council to okay. reconsider, then we will reconsider. Absolutely, that's the procedure. I, I, well, I respect your ruling, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Councillor Black, procedure, point of order. Oh, would not the first order of business be to have someone challenge your ruling first? That's correct, and anybody can do that, and I respect that. Councillor Oliver, Mr. Mayor, by by challenging if we do, then then what happens? If I were to put forward a, a challenge, then how does how does that get resolved? This is where we were three weeks ago, where I declined to challenge the, the mayor's chair at that I, point. I hear so. you. Um, Mr. Clerk, if uh, we ask for a ruling on overruling my ruling, then it would it be a show of hands? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, if um, there is a, ch a challenge to the chair, we just immediately go to vote okay. um, on, on your ruling on the issue, and it's a simple majority. And a simple majority. And if that simple majority, um, if, the if your ruling is, is knocked down, then we just go right back to that motion. So if it's challenged, I'll ask for a show of hands. If it's a majority, we proceed. I have made a ruling that this needs a notice of, notice of uh, needs a motion of reconsideration by council. Uh, therefore, I don't believe it's an order. Uh, you, anybody can challenge my ruling, and if it's challenged, I'll just simply say I have been challenged. Do you support the challenge to overrule me? And if the majority agrees to that, then then we will proceed. And if the majority says no, we believe that the chair's. Um, interpretation of this is is correct then uh, and it's defeated then we move on to the next notice of motion so far I haven't been challenged but if I am challenged which is perfectly in order and this council wants to proceed then vote on support to overrule me your vote would be to overrule my decision on this. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the explanation. I, I am, am reluctant to do this. No, you do what you have to do. Based on the information that I have been given over yes. the past several weeks by the clerk, Mr. Mayor, I will challenge the yes, ruling. Sir. And, and because I, I feel there's very, very strong evidence that, <clears throat> that this should not require reconsideration. And, and if we get to debate this and discuss it, I'll pr try and present my reasons, Mr. Mayor, but I reluctantly will challenge no, that. I, no, you have that right. So we're going to so, have a vote on yeah, overruling so, my ruling. Yes, yeah, so um, now since we're in a challenge, I'm the chair of the meeting. Uh, so the process is to immediately vote upon the mayor's ruling. Um, so we're going to vote for uh, those who are in favor of the ruling, to be clear. Um, so all those in favor of the mayor's ruling. One, two, three, four. All those opposed. One, two, three. The mayor's ruling. Oh. Uh, I believe we had voted twice. <laughs> uh, I'll have to conduct the vote again. The, the chair doesn't vote. Uh, so to proceed again, all those in favor of the mayor's ruling upon the matter. Three votes. All those opposed. Four. Okay, the mayor's ruling is overturned, and we move on. So this moment is now becomes a motion. And Mr. Um, Clerk, I have to say, unfortunately and respectfully, that I think we're on very dangerous grounds here. I will be vacating my chair, reluctantly. I accept the majority of this council. I'm going to be vacating my chair and leaving the chambers. Someone can get me, if they wish, to come back to conclude the meeting. We are on dangerous grounds, not following the procedures. We have had ombudsmen's twice after this council with our procedures on dealing with our ways of doing business here. I have no problem with what you people have chosen to do. 
I have a lot of problem with the way we are handling our procedure at this council. And I think you're headed for personal grounds. Uh, personal, personally, I think you're headed for dangerous ground here. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Clerk. I'll turn it over to you. So, uh, uh, now we require a chair for the meeting. Uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, if you are able to uh, sit in the chair, if not, we'll look to committee to vote for somebody else to assume the chair of this meeting so we can proceed. Uh, Mr. Clerk, it, it, it's, in my opinion, difficult for me to assume the chair because I'm the mover of this motion. So I'll decline the opportunity to sit in the chair just for the purpose of this motion. Uh, would uh, council like to appoint somebody to chair? Uh, Councillor Black? Some further clarification myself, because I'm of the same opinion as the mayor. Uh, I feel exactly the same way that we're headed for trouble, and I really don't want any part of it either. Um, if the mayor is leaving, I I'm just wondering. I'm going to be voting against this, and uh, I don't agree with it. Maybe I should be vacating my spot as well. I'm not sure what to do. Uh, <laughs> through, through, through you, uh, Council Black, just uh, to keep on track here, I'm looking for a motion to uh, appoint somebody to chair the remainder of this meeting. I won't uh, entertain anything further until we have such a motion on the floor. If we don't. Uh, Councillor Brunton. Can we recommend our county manager chair the meeting? Uh, through you, uh, he's, he's an administrative official, uh, oh. Councillor Brunton. We need a, an elected official uh, to sit in the chair. This is an interesting impasse. Um, perhaps um, we can go through the, the I'm trying to think. Do we recess? 10 minutes to figure this out okay 10 minute recess to figure this out and we will return with the chair um, or uh, request somebody to come back and resume the meeting meetings res uh, recess for 10 minutes what a farce what a freaking farce
On a strip of sandy soil Lies a county called Norfolk It's Ontario, south coast, you know And it's surely not remote If you pass through or spend a day Or decide to call it home You'll see why we love it here And are proud to call it our own No County home, no phone, no phone. We know you can't go wrong with the friendly folk of no phone. You won't be a stranger long. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world. Can't wait to return home Drop a line in a placid lake Or stroll along the shore Take a tour on a peaceful country road And found to be back for more Of Norfolk, Norfolk My Cullen County home With hard work, we built a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals, too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dog woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. On a strip of sandy soil Lies a county called Norfolk It's Ontario, south coast, you know And it's surely not remote If you pass through or spend a day Or decide to call it home You'll see why we love it here And are proud to call it our own No County home, no phone, no phone. We know you can't go wrong with the friendly folk of no I, I never get to see, sit in this seat here. Um, <laughs> this is the one that's in a lifetime thing. Um, so uh, I call this meeting back to order. Uh, so we have a motion. Uh, it's moved by Councillor Geis and seconded by Councillor Columbus that Councillor Wells be appointed the chair for the remainder of this item. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, Councillor Wells. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Call the meeting to order. What do, we, do you want to read the motion? Or? Uh, sure. I've asked the clerk to read the motion so we know exactly what we are talking about. Whereas new information has come to light regarding the upcoming OMB hearing on Hastings Drive land use and zoning subsequent to the May 23rd, 2017 in-camera meeting, namely that vacant lot owners have been identified as parties to the hearing and will participate in the hearing, and that no reconsideration of previous motions regarding Hastings Drive land use and zoning, July 12th, 2016, May 23rd, 2017, and September 26th, 2016, is required, and further that Council provide definitive direction to the County Solicitor on November 27, uh, 21st, 2017, either in camera or in an open session at the discretion of the County Clerk regarding the County's position on the matter of land use and zoning on Hastings Drive, which the County Solicitor is to communicate and advocate for at the upcoming hearing. And further, that said position shall be communicated to all par parties to the upcoming hearing as soon as possible after November 21st, 2017. That's the motion we are debating. And that motion has been moved by Councillor Oliver, and we need a seconder to begin with. You are seconding that, Councillor Geisens? Yes. So we now have a motion on the floor. Councillor Oliver, please. Thanks very much, Mr. Chairman, for uh, letting me speak first. I did sort of put my notes down on paper, if you don't mind, nope. just so I didn't forget anything, and obviously this is important. And I do want to first say, uh, in a sense, apologize to my colleagues that, that we have gotten to this point. Uh, it certainly had not been my intent. And all along, I, as I hope evidence, when two or three weeks ago, I chose not to challenge the mayor on ruling the motion out of order at that time. Uh, because it hadn't gone through the notice period, et cetera, et cetera. So it's disappointing to me that uh, our mayor felt he had to do what he did, but he did so, and you've kindly agreed to at least allow us to have some discussion about this now. And again, the only reason why I feel this is so important to be dealt with this evening is because we are scheduled to meet with our solicitor next week, a week from this evening, uh, to prep him and to have him inform us further as to the OMB hearing, which we know is coming up in January. And, and there would have been no other opportunity, Mr. Chairman, to do so uh, and provide any new information, should Council wish to do so, without having dealt with this motion. So I appreciate that we're going to deal with it. We've struggled for some time trying to decide what is best in the long term for, Hast for the Hastings Drive neighborhood of Long Point. Following the deferral of a zoning decision, for Hastings Drive when we finalized our new Norfolk County bylaw in 2014, we looked at a variety of options through the zoning study, which was finished in March of 2016. The decision was made on July the 12th, 2016, to approve a zoning bylaw for Hastings Drive that implemented what we called option five from the consultant study, namely allowing seasonal use from April to October of self-contained, licensed, recreational vehicles or trailers with the self-contained provision requiring onboard potable water and sewage storage. Such seasonal use zoning would have required the RV or trailer to be removed from the private lot and from Hastings Drive no later than October 31st annually. This decision of Council on July the 12th, 16 was felt to be a compromise between allowing essentially no use of vacant lots on Hastings and allowing new development, i.e. new cottages to be built on vacant lots. In May of this year, 2017, just more than 10 months after the July 12th decision in 2016, council was informed by staff and the county solicitor that one or more cottage owners on Hastings Drive were planning to or had already appealed Council's bylaw decision of July 12th, 16, to the OMB. And we're proposing an alternative bylaw that essentially prohibited any meaningful use of vacant lots other than casual day use. Further, Council was informed at that time that it appeared as though vacant lot owners on Hastings had not and were not intending to contest the appeal due to potential cost lack of technical assistance, etc. In light of these two pieces of motion, of information rather, Council passed a motion on May the 23rd, 17, 
directing the county solicitor and staff to make amendments to a proposed bylaw for Hastings Drive whenever possible and grounding the county, granting the county solicitor authority to consent to a, vi a final bylaw whenever it was arrived at and whatever it consisted of. Council, of course, I believe assumed that attempts to reach compromise and make amendments would continue for as long as necessary and possible which would be up to and including, if necessary, a hearing in front of the OMB. In September of this year, 2017, Council was then informed by the County Solicitor that two parties, a private vacant lot owner and a group of vacant lot owners, had made application to be recognized as parties and participants to the upcoming OMB hearing. And so, on September the 26th of 17, Council passed a further motion directing the County Solicitor to support the inclusion of these parties as participants to any hearing, and Council reiterated its support for compromise to be reached amongst the parties, presumably prior to or at the actual hearing. In my opinion, Mr. Chairman, and hence the wording in my motion, Neither the motion of May 23rd nor the motion of September the 26th of this year contradicts Council's motion only definitive direction of, uh, on appropriate zoning for Hastings, which was the bylaw we passed on July the 12th, which implemented option five. It's my strong position that given that the OMB hearing date has now been set and given Council's continued support for a compromise solution to be reached, that Council does need to provide specific direction to the County Solicitor on what position to bring forward to the hearing and advocate for on behalf of the County and County Council. Further, in my opinion, because of the non-specific nature of the motions passed on May 23rd, 17 and September 26, 17, no reconsideration of these motions needs to be done prior to us meeting with our County Solicitor. For these reasons, I do ask Council to approve this motion that's in front of us tonight. It would simply give Council the prerogative and the, and the, the wherewithal and the uh, mandate, if you like, Mr. Chairman, to have a good and frank discussion with our solicitor and to provide direction to him as Council deems appropriate at that time. Thank you. Thank you. Council Black. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to support this, and I feel that the direction that we've given our lawyer is the appropriate one. Uh, we've heard from our lawyer that uh, he could not find a planner to support uh, the county's position. We've heard from upper levels of government that uh, consistently tell us that we're uh, approving different things against the provincial policy statement, that any type of development on Hastings Drive is against the provincial policy statement uh, that um, to go into a situation like this uh, to try and ask a lawyer to defend the indefensible will cost the county uh, a lot of money and if we change our direction now the January hearing no doubt or may be put off again and we already know that uh, 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 the lawyers around the table were having trouble finding a date for this hearing. We were lucky to get January. Even the summertime was out. So this may end up having to put the OMB hearing off until another year. And uh, we will be sitting around this table arguing amongst each other for another year and making this the one and only matter that we've been spending so much attention to. Um, and the mayor, I think, has a very good point in that this is no doubt going to garner the attention of the ombudsman. These are irregular, I agree with him, these are irregular proceedings. We've put our, we've debated this, we've put our uh, position in place and we should adhere to it and I ask for a recorded vote. Thank you.
Councillor Brunton. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I'd like to draw your attention to page 163 in my agenda. I believe the date is wrong. Uh, September 26, 2017, that should read, not 16. I don't know if that's the official. Do you see that, Andy? Did you get that? Uh, I'll read you, Mr. It. Chair. I, I believe uh, this would be the second time that Council has. November 21st is the second time that Council's brought Mr. Tice back no, no, to no, speak no. about it. In the motion on page 163, there's a date referred to on September 26th, 16. It should be 17. Oh, 17. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yes. yes okay. Sorry. My mistake. Sorry. Since we're getting real legal here, we, we better have it correct. But uh, I don't want to go back to where we started with this thing when we spent 35 grand to bring in a planner. But my recollection of the meeting we had with Mr. Tice is a little bit different than what I'm, I'm hearing. When we discussed with him, and I'm not going to say we, we gave direction, and I feel that I thought he did get some direction from us because of the changes. But at the time, Councilor he said... Councilor Brunton, yes. just uh, speaking to the clerk, be very careful what you are saying, right? because most of this or some of this happened in closed session, and you cannot divulge what happened in closed session. Okay. So just be careful, that's all. All right, all I'm going to say is, I think things, Councilor Oliver has hit it on the head, things have changed with the overall position of other parties that weren't party when we discussed things earlier. So I think that warrants further discussion with our county solicitor. I'll leave that part alone, but I will say this. When we discussed, as a group, we adopted option five from that study, we then changed within a week. Is that not reconsideration? No, we changed that fairly quickly. We adopted option five and then it, it changed. And it wasn't a year later. At least that's my recollection of it. So, again, there's a lot of things that have changed, and I feel we warrant further discussion. So I'll leave it at that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Brown. Councilor Columbus, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To uh, our clerk, is there, is there documentation to show that the uh, OMB chair has, with respect to the, the vacant lot owners, is there documentation that they are a party to the hearing? Uh, okay, uh, yeah, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I think we have correspondence from the solicitor uh, to that regard. Is that our solicitor or some other solicitor? The county manager will speak to that. Please. No one on staff, as far as I'm aware, has uh, personally, we don't have a corporate record with that. Our solicitor has indicated such to us. All those notices are sent to our legal representation, which in this case is an external law firm. Uh, so they're in possession of those. But we are informed and verily believe that other people have been added as parties. Is that the end of your comment, Councilor Columbus? Any further comments? Okay, Council, what do you wish to do? Ready? All right, ready for the motion? You want to read it? We are now going to, yes, we have a motion. The clerk will read here momentarily. So, and a recorded vote has been asked for after we read it. Whereas new information has come to light regarding the upcoming OMB hearing on Hastings Drive land use and zoning subsequent to the May 23rd, 2017 in-camera meeting, namely that vacant lot owners have been identified as parties to the hearing and will participate in the hearing, and that no reconsideration of previous motions regarding Hastings Drive land use and zoning July 12th, uh, 2016 and May 23rd, 2017 and September 26, 2017 is required, and further that council provide definitive direction to the county solicitor on November 21st, 2017, either in camera or in open session at the discretion of the county clerk regarding the county's position on the matter of land use zoning on Hastings Drive, which 
which the county solicitor is to communicate and advocate for at the upcoming hearing and further that said position shall be communicated to all parties at, to the upcoming hearing as soon as possible after November 21st 2017 you've heard the motion anybody have any question about the motion you're not clear seeing none mr. clerk if you would call the roll please Councillor Oliver. Yes. Councillor Columbus. Yes. Councillor Geisens. Yes. Councillor Sonnenberg. No. Councillor Black. No. Councillor Brunton. Yes. Councillor Wells. No. The motion carries four to three. Is that it? Uh, yes, uh, we'll grab the Thank you very much. Okay, Council, uh, the next item on our agenda is item 16B, which is Councillor Black. Uh, his notice of motion as well, and it's on page 165, and I believe, Councillor Black, there is a, uh, you have a, prepared a motion requesting a waiving of the rules as well? No, I haven't. I'll just leave it as a notice of motion. Oh, okay. That'll be just fine. Um, then that is a notice of motion regarding Long Point Region Conservation Authority members. And item C under section 16, a further motion from Councillor Black uh, with respect to Hastings Drive matters. Mr. Black, again, there was a, a draft motion here to waive the rules, but are you similarly saying you don't wish to have that requested? Leave it as a notice of motion. Okay, thank you very much. So that then allows us to move to other business uh, I'm going to start, I think, with uh, Councillor Height. Any other business for this evening? Certainly, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I, we got some bad news in my area this week. The CIBC branch is closing after I can't tell you how many years of service. It was the branch I first opened my bank account as a child. And it's very unfortunate, and I, I realize there isn't much for Council to do on this because obviously it's a matter of money for the large financial institutions. Uh, you know, th there's a, a huge repercussion to this. There's a lot of retired people, there's a lot of people in my area that don't drive and will not have access to banks anymore or to be able to do their financials because the closest bank will now be Delhi, Simcoe or Tilsonburg. It's a long way to go, Mr. Chair. I've heard that we might lose our Service Ontario branch as well over this. It's just a small shop. She can't really afford to drive that far out of town and the rules are that you, you must do a deposit to have one of those every single day. And I'm not sure how that's going to affect us at Bacchus. I know they too handle cash and it has to be deposited as well. It's, it's a real blow to my community and I hope that uh, maybe a credit union or Scotiabank or TD, because I like those ones, come to town. That would be great. And uh, yeah, that was the bad news for that. And then uh, next on my list, I received a call from somebody and they were saying that we will no longer be issuing building permits out of the Langton office as of today. Is that Are correct? Are you asking for clarification? Mr. Baird, could you help on that? Yes, one? certainly through the chair, um, Councillor Height, we've had some staffing changes. So our permit clerk has moved into a contract role as our zoning coordinator. And she's now based in uh, 